What's going on, everybody? Welcome. You are watching or listening to Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. We're back with another of our Q&A episodes. So a lot going on here that I don't know about. <laughs> you don't know the format of this show. We'll stick around. We have a lot of fun. And actually, we've got some new stuff that we're doing starting today. So hope you enjoy it. Now, if this is your first entry into our show, wow, you picked a weird one, but That's it's going to be one. fun. Yeah, there's yeah. nothing wrong. It's just not typically what we do. What do we do most of the time? Well, Mondays, we're usually interviewing someone. I'm interviewing someone. Thursdays, we're usually doing a topic-driven episode. Andrew joins me on most of those Thursday episodes. Hi, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm wonderful. Awesome. Yay. If you want to go deep, see all the things that we got going on, go to whistlekick.com, find the store, grab something, help support us, use the code PODCAST15, save 15%, and see all the other stuff that we're doing. If you want to go deeper on this show, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Check out the transcripts, the links, the videos, the photos, sign up for the newsletter, look at all the other things we've ever done, make a suggestion for a guest or a topic, lots of things there. Now, before I forget, if you have a question that you want to incorporate into the next Q&A, you don't send those to me. It's like the one thing you don't send to me. You send it to this guy over here, Andrew at WhistlekickMartialArtsRadio.com, because the fun thing about these Q&As, I don't know the cues. I just, I just go. I just give you the A's. Right away. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not a slogan we're going to use for these shows. Not anytime soon. <laughs> Can you tell this is all impromptu? Uh, anything else that we got to tell them? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. We're going to give you some other stuff in between. A slightly new format today. Uh, we're trying some things. We're always trying things, as you should be as a martial artist. Always. How do, how do we get better? And that's what we're doing with today's episode. So we're going to find out on the other end. If you like what we did today, let us know. If you didn't, let us know. <laughs> Just be nice. <laughs> All right. So first thing, everybody, yeah. I've got this uh, I've got this clock right here. So we're going to use this to time Jeremy on his questions. Okay. So that we're only going to give you five minutes. Five minutes. I've contemplated giving you slightly less time each time. Why? You're getting Because you're getting quicker. Well, I'm really good at what I do. All right. I'm efficient. So you should be okay with less time. If you can be one thing, you should be efficient. <laughs> All right. So question number one. Okay. This comes in from Matt Nather. Okay. Uh, his question is, at what rank do you stop teaching a low block is a low block? For example, uh, and start teaching more in-depth meanings and multiple applications of even a basic technique. Okay. So... Um, we're in video, so let's show this. So if you wouldn't mind, I won't look at the phone. Okay. Are, are we timing? I mean, I was gonna, but what yeah, do you start, want me to start the timer, okay. put the phone down. Okay, yeah. Okay. Um, we've got enough vision coming in. Yeah. You can do it just from sitting there. Just throw that hand in. Yep. Okay. Boom. So what Matt's talking about for people who may not know, because we might have some low ranks watching. Sure. Right? We're used to low block, right? Up down or maybe if it's taekwondo it's you know there's a cross or yeah. i'm sure there's some other variation what matt's talking about is that in a lot of martial arts systems it becomes right so that 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 the initial hand that's out there that we're taught is for retraction actually becomes the block or whatever and this hand that's a block becomes something else whether you know i'm striking the inside of the elbow not that i would be low blocking a punch but you know, to the knee or whatever. Yeah. So I just I just wanted to make sure people knew that that's what we're talking about. So Matt's question, how when do we start teaching that? It depends. It really depends on the curriculum. I, I could totally see an advantage to teaching like middle ranks this stuff. I can also see some advantage based on my time learning some Filipino martial arts where the fundamental block protocol is brush, grab, strike. Mm -hmm. This whole, uh, um, that whole structure <clears throat> isn't that difficult to understand. So the idea is, right, there, there's a benefit there, but I don't think there's enough benefit that you wait till somebody's like first, second, mm -hmm. 40th degree black belt before you teach it. It depends on the goals of the system and how you put all these pieces together. Because if you teach somebody white belt, low block, low block, low block, low block, and then a yellow belt, you know, six months later, okay, don't do that. 
now you're throwing them for a loop. Mm. If you're going to teach somebody something, anything, you have to give them enough time to derive the benefit from it. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I tend to have the low block be just a low block for the very, very beginners the first time they see it. Mm -hmm. I don't incorporate, um, you know, as an example, one that, that I have used is someone's grabbing your lapel and you're reaching up and you're pulling it off. Sure. You're stripping it off, right? There's your low block. I don't, for super, super beginners, I don't try and get into a lot of, here's five different applications for low block. I started out at one. And once I've been there a number of months, then I might kind of start to break that off. But I don't certainly don't wait until they're, you know, a, a high level, you know, brown belt type, you know. What you find in most karate schools and even most most martial arts schools that teach those really structured blocks, I don't know what we're doing with time now, the deeper they get in their rank progression, the closer everything becomes shuto. Yeah. Right? It becomes a lot of open hand, a lot, a lot of, of parry, it. and it is essentially what mm -hmm. I was taught as that brush grab strike, mm -hmm. Filipino mm -hmm. martial arts stuff. I don't know if that stuff exists in, in you know Indonesian martial arts. I don't claim to know every martial art, right? So if, if I'm if I'm too narrowly applying that concept, don't worry about it. But the deeper someone gets, you know, if you and I were to spar right now, I'm not doing these. <laughs> I'm I'm doing this, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all really small movement, soft, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm just kind of getting things out of the way. And it looks like this. It it yeah. really is very similar to that. And I would expect you would be the same. Yeah, Most absolutely. people, the more time they spend training that's where they end up. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it is wrong, but I just, I'm gonna come back to, if you're gonna teach someone high block, outside forearm block, right? If you're gonna teach these concepts, just make sure they have enough time mm -hmm. to derive the benefit from them. And you as the instructor should know what the benefit is. If yeah. you can't explain <clears throat> why they're doing it, then either you need to go back to the drawing board for yourself or you need to go back to the drawing board for them. Yeah. All right. Good answer. Good answer. So what's interesting is we're, because we're on video, mm -hmm. we're able to show some yeah. of these techniques. Uh, another way you can, and this could be a great thing to think about for your, for the Patreon, you could do some videos on some of these alternate uses for, which, you know, Patreon is something that uh, people could uh, kind of help us out with. Absolutely. Patreon.com slash whistle kick. One of the things that maybe you and I will start doing when we get together is recording some video for Patreon. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and even though we're committed to doing one video a month, uh, there's no reason we can't do more. You know, especially if, if when we record something like this, we were able to go deeper. And actually, you know, let's let's do that. Yeah. At, when we're done here, it'll take us five minutes mm -hmm. just to show a few things. We've got plenty of space. There you go. So you got a first glimpse as to what we might do in a future Patreon. Yeah. Uh, other things that are going on on the Patreon we do every two weeks or so i do a behind the scenes post like who here's who we've recorded with but it's not live yet mm -hmm. and who here is who we are hoping to that's too many who's <laughs> w h's uh here's who we're hoping to record with soon so if you really like the show and you want to know what's coming it's the only way you're going to find out it's we limit it to, yeah to patreon yeah. we don't tell anybody anywhere else our patreon subscribers got to know that cynthia rothrock was coming mm -hmm. on long before everybody else Pretty cool. So well, pretty cool. Um, yeah, video, audio. There's there's lots of good stuff going on there on the Patreon, and we do that because not only do you get like free merch, you know, no matter what tier, even the two dollar a month tier gets free stickers. So like we're not making a ton of money on this, like everything else. But the goal here is that yeah, we make a little bit of money on the Patreon. But one, you stick around. Two, you get value. Three, hopefully you put that sticker on something, wear that shirt, and, you know, maybe we get somebody else paying attention to what we're doing. Maybe. So, Patreon.com slash whistle kick. All right, ready for question number two? Ready for number two. All right. So this question, uh, oh, I'm going to skip that one because that's another one from Matt Nathan. We're going to okay. do one from his wife, Jenny. Okay. Jenny Nathan. When can you allow a student to tell you they have reached their physical, mental, emotional limit? And when do you, as an instructor or mentor, oh. push the student to go for one more time? Wow. 
That is an amazing question, Vinny. Okay. Digesting. Okay, five minutes. 11 11. Okay. So, students should be able to say that at any time. If you have a culture where they're not allowed to say that, bad things happen. Mm -hmm. So, they have to be allowed to say it, but it doesn't mean you have to relent to the request. Excuse me, to the request. Because your job as an instructor, we did the episode on instructor versus coach versus, what was the third one? Uh, instructor, coach, mentor. Mentor. All of those people help you get better. But when I think of instructor, coach, when I think of the <clears throat> best martial arts instructors I've had, they've had that coach attribute where they help you go beyond yourself. Mm -hmm. where you are able to do more than you thought you could because they start to see what you're capable of. They believe in you and they tell you they believe in you. I have had points in time where I've thought I was at my limit. They've happened as recently as this year. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. There were points in time, many of you who know what's going on with me personally this year know this has been the hardest year of my life. This has been a rough year. And there were times I was like, <laughs> so I have a G-O-O-G-L-E-H-O-M-E, -E, several of them, and that was the one in the bathroom. There's one right there. There's one on the other side of that wall. There's one over there. This is taking my time. I hate it you. Okay. It is rare that we are actually at our maximum. When we're talking about physical exertion, your body will shut down mm -hmm. before you reach it. Our bodies are really good at keeping us alive. Try to stop breathing. Doesn't work. If you're really good at not breathing, you're going to pass out and your body will start breathing again. Right? Like it's, it's really hard to hurt yourself pushing to the maximum. There, yep. there are some things that happen. They are rare, et cetera. When someone poses this question or, or, or this request, I'm at my, how did, how did she term it? Uh, when a student to tell you they've reached their physical, mental, or emotional limit. Okay. I have not experienced <clears throat> students saying that they have reached their mental limit or their emotional limit very often. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I know is that if I'm training for about an hour to an hour and a half, and I'm working on material that is newer or uncomfortable to me. For example, when I'm working on superfoot stuff, mm -hmm. I start to tap out on con conceptual material, usually about an hour in. If Terry's working with Paul and I, it's usually how it goes is Terry, Terry Dow working with Paul Milhol and I. If the three of us are working together, Terry's teaching us and he's giving us new drills, new material, it's about an hour in. I'm like, okay, my brain's full, so we're gonna have to do things that aren't brain. At this mm -hmm. point, it doesn't mean I can't keep training, but I have it outside of that. That's a rare thing I've heard students say because there usually isn't that much brand new material yeah. Yeah, yeah. in a martial arts school, unless you're really new. And if you're really new, then it's all overwhelming and you probably don't even know to say anything. Yeah. yeah. So when you're talking about it, let's talk about the physical part. If the student says, I have reached my physical maximum. Dial it back for them. If you know them really well, you can make the judgment call. The less you know them, the more you have to acquiesce mm, yeah. for their own safety. But if they say, I've reached my limit, okay, let's go slower. Mm -hmm. You do this less. And then after five minutes of that, you're like, guess you weren't at your limit, right? And you start to build trust from them. Hey, I went over time for the first time in like forever. No, you haven't. You still got one minute. Oh, sweet. Over time, they start to build more trust in you. So when you say, when they say, I can't do more, and you say, yes, you can, they believe you. And they do more. Yep. And then it's it's a self-fulfilling prophecy where they become more confident in you as an instructor and themselves and with their own skill. So it, there we go. It's too easy to just, for you as a, for the person to just say, I quit, I can't do it anymore. 
I think our goal as the instructor coach is to, if you can't, if you feel you can't do this thing, well, let's just back it off a little bit right. rather than stop and complete. Remember, most people don't have difficult lives. Mm -hmm. Most people do not have much physical exertion in their life to the point where I, you, you listen to personal trainers talk about coaching someone through lifting weights. Mm. And if they've never done it before, the sensation of, of strain within the muscles, they describe as being painful. If you've lifted weights, you know what I'm talking about. It's not painful. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. But if it's a new sensation, the only frame of reference you have is that it's painful. A lot of people stepping into a martial arts class, especially as an adult, do not understand. And even kids now, too. Mm -hmm. Kids do not run out in the woods and play and bicycle and, and come home at dark the way they did when, when we were kids. So that physical exertion that we may take for granted as adults and understanding of our own bodies may be unfamiliar to them. So yep. tread lightly. Good. Nice. Awesome. Okay. I want to talk about the flexibility program. Yeah. And I want to talk about it because it's been crushing. So for those of you who don't know, we've got a number of programs. You can go to whistlekickprograms.com to get them. We've got a, a strength building program, which we um, rebranded as Force. We've got a cardiovascular conditioning program, which we rebranded as Fuel. Fuel. <clears throat> um, we've got our speed development program, which we rebranded as Fast. And then we've got our flexibility program, which is what led the whole rebrand because it was called Flex. Flex. <laughs> and I said, oh, let's do some fun puzzle pieces. Have you seen the graphics? They're kind of neat. They, those fell out of my brain. I didn't do the final designs. But we launched the Flex program for free because there are a lot of flexibility programs out there and a lot of them are junk. And instead of stepping into that space and saying, no, buy ours, it's better. I stepped in and said, buy whatever you want, but here's a free one. Mm -hmm. It is the one that is the most scientifically driven. Uh, it is the one that I am most confident in the results. And the irony is, sadly, people are going to grab it because it's free, but they're not going to do it. Mm. Because they're going to open it and they're going to expect some kind of revolutionary approach. And it's it's not. Like everything else we do, it's okay it's evolutionary. You know, we take what has been established, we apply scientific principles, and we give you the best bang for the buck. For moving forward um we had a lot of this when we when we launched the the force program that people started doing it and they're like oh but they didn't stick with it yeah because unfortunately people don't stick with programs and that's part of why we did this one for free because we wanted the people who are willing to stick with a thing to have access to it have yeah. the the um the drive mm -hmm. to really get better to say oh I did this program and it works. Let's see what else they have. So uh, you can get that flex program at whistlekickprograms.com. And I want to know what you think of the puzzle piece graphics. I like it. They look good. I thought they were fun. Yeah. All right. Ready for question number three? Question three. All right. Uh, another question from Matt Nather. Why are the Nathers dominating the Q&A? Because they sent in a crap load of questions is the fourth one going to be from them should no. we call this q a nathan edition nope. Nope. no okay uh just a reminder andrew at whistlekick martial arts radio.com and i can read your name on the air uh, okay or if you don't want him to you can tell him not to and he won't that, that's true too right it doesn't yeah, you yeah. don't have to be public about this all right so should you require breaking as a testing requirement if so when should you introduce breaking as a testing requirement for students okay my feelings on breaking have changed many times over the course of my, my martial arts career. Um, initially, breaking was something that I saw as a an aspect of training like forms or self-defense or fighting or weapons. It was a thing you could train and most versatile martial artists did some of it. Uh, some people specialized in it, but it wasn't required. Growing up, most of our breaking was like, it was very rare. Because who's buying the wood? Right? Like, yeah. if you've got a big school, buying wood's expensive. You know, mm -hmm. roughly a buck a board. 
So if you want everybody to break five boards and you got 20 kids in class, there's a hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. Probably didn't make a hundred bucks on that class. So it's, it's kind of a losing proposition. I then trained in a bunch of arts that, that did nothing with breaking. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of schools and even styles like, you know, the Capoeira school I was in. We break. We didn't, it wasn't even part of the conversation. And then I started training Taekwondo. And my instructor loves, my Taekwondo instructor loves breaking. Absolutely loves breaking. To the point where he's very proud. He's shorter than I am. He's got a couple pounds on me. Not a ton. Mm -hmm. When he used to compete, he would break with a round, roundhouse, turning kick, in step. Mm -hmm. Top of the foot. Five boards. No spacers. Wow. He's a little crazy. <laughs> he would also describe himself as a little crazy. That, there are plenty of stories I could tell. And because he has that love for breaking, we did break more and we talked more about breaking. Mm -hmm. And I think there are a number of things I saw such that I'm not going to say breaking is required, but I think it is a very, very good thing. For example, take a kid who's just started martial arts. They have no idea what they're doing, why they're doing it, how it works. Mm -hmm. But you take a really cheap board, even a breakable board, and you get them to put their foot through it, and all of a sudden, dots connect. Yeah, They're excited. Mm -hmm. They feel accomplished. And it helps to start lining up biomechanics. You could say the same thing about an adult. They learn to put their elbow or foot or fist or whatever mm -hmm. through a board. They feel accomplished. They have something tangible that they can point to and say, oh, because I did this, this happened. That's really valuable. Further, I have come to believe that the majority of martial artists think that they are going to punch their attacker in the head with a closed fist. <laughs> And it's going to be fine. Yeah. If you have never put your fist through a single board, or even worse, you did and you went, ow, that really hurts. Um, the skull's pretty hard. Yeah. So I think there's an aspect of self-defense and conditioning training in there. Now, if it's going to be required... It should be taught all the way up through. Anything that you're requiring of people in a black belt exam or whatever the equivalent is should be so important that some aspect of it is institutionalized from day one. For example, conditioning. If conditioning is an important part of your black belt exam, you should have conditioning as part of every class. If you don't, you are sending mixed messages. If breaking is something that you want your black belt students to do beyond basic proficiency, it is something that should happen probably monthly mm -hmm. at a martial arts school. That makes sense. Yeah, I've I've never been an advocate of. Well, I guess I I was I was going to make a statement that I I was going to then disagree with, so I'm not going to make it. <laughs> um, I, I do agree that if it's going to be something that is going to be a an integral part of the test, it shouldn't be something that they see that day. Now, there is something to be said for surprising people. Yep, yep. But when you're talking about something like that where an injury can occur from yep. lack of experience, yep. I think that's the wrong time to spring it on them. What are your thoughts between a wooden board and the rebreakable boards? They both have their place. Mm -hmm. um, if I was going to work technique, mm -hmm because I'm trying to move up from, let's say, five boards to six boards, I'm not going to go through $100 in wood a day practicing that. I'm going to use a stack of rebreakable boards mm -hmm. and get really good at dialing that in. And I'm going to work both angles. Yeah. Just like if you're trying to be a great fighter, you know, with any rule set. You're working technique, you're working cardiovascular conditioning, you're working strength, you're working flexibility, right? Like a, a good martial artist works a bunch of different things. If you want to be really good at breaking, you're working breaking in a bunch of different ways using different stimuli. 
Awesome. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> How many minutes was that? That was well, we we I added some, but that was about five minutes. Okay, that was good. I don't get penalized for your no, your you idea. don't. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we're going to start doing, it's a little new. I like new things. New things are usually pretty good. Yeah. One of the things I've long asked people to do is to leave reviews. And people used to leave reviews because it was really easy. It's not as easy anymore. Any of the podcast review platforms, it's not quite as simple. So we've decided, I've decided, Andrew didn't disagree. It's a good idea. We are going to encourage you to leave reviews by offering you an incentive. Mm. Every time we do one of these Q&A episodes, I'm going to pull a review from the last time we did one of these Q&A episodes. If there are multiple, it'll be random. And we're going to read it on the air. I'm going to read it on the air. And then that person, if they hear this episode in the next, let's be reasonable. I don't want to put like a hard limit on it. But, you know, if you email me like three years from now, <laughs> no go. But you email me, I'm going to give you a $20 gift certificate to whistlekick.com. For free? For free. Well, wow. not for free. For you yeah. taking your time and leaving these reviews. We're going to start with Apple Podcasts. For now, it's just going to be Apple Podcasts. Because most podcast listening happens on Apple devices. Mm -hmm. It is the most established podcast platform. That's where we're going to start. Over time, we will roll these out. So um, <clears throat> if you've left a review on Apple Podcasts, you're like, oh, I'm missing out. Uh, don't worry. As we roll out the next ones, you will get plenty of opportunities. There are lots of places you can leave reviews. Okay. So this review comes from DHAM80. And I love when we get these. I've had a few of these over the years. These are my favorite bits of feedback, and I've gotten emails like this. I'm back in martial arts, and this podcast is a big reason. I've been waiting, sorry, I've been wanting to get back into the martial arts for over 15 years, but I'm finally back in. A big part is Jeremy's responsiveness, the emails that help me guide into the right topics in the podcast, and by having inspiring conversations that push my passion to make the jump. He's a great influencer in the martial arts, and I can't wait to listen for years to come. Well, thank you. Thank you, DHAM80. You should email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com. I'll get you the gift certificate. And uh, yeah. If, why $20? If you watch sales and you apply discount codes appropriately, you get a free shirt. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Um, yeah. So anybody who leaves an Apple Podcast review between now and the next show, is entered to win one of these. Oh, but Jeremy, what if a whole bunch of people leave them? Like, I should game the system so I get the best chance. Uh, I'm more than open to giving out one at a time. <laughs> we have an internal metric that I will not tell you what it is because I don't want you to game the system. You'll be able to figure it out over the coming months where I'm more than willing to give out more than one. The more reviews left, the more gift certificates I'll give out. Easy enough. All right. Okay. You ready for <clears throat> Q4? Four. All right. This is not from one of the makers. <clears throat> Are you sure? I'm positive. <laughs> this is this comes from fellow podcaster Jared Wilson. Jared of oh, Marshall Thoughts. Yep. If you're not listening to Marshall Thoughts, you should listen to Marshall <clears throat> Thoughts. Jared does a great job. He's been a great friend, great supporter, and is a perfect illustration of how mutual support in the martial arts leads to everyone's benefit. Well, I can't say that I've benefited him, but he's absolutely benefited me and this show and what we do. All right. Well, let's see what you think of his question. <laughs> I should have held. I should have waited till after. <laughs> Besides Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio, what is the best martial arts podcast and why is it Martial Thoughts? <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Okay. Um... I'm going to answer this slightly differently than it was asked That's because right. of the way it was asked. <laughs> One of the reasons I like podcasts is that there's a low barrier to entry and thus you have any number of subjects available for you to immerse yourself in. Martial arts, of course, being the one at hand. Jared's show is different than our show, mm -hmm. is different than Ando's show, is different than... Everyday martial artist is different than 
Karate Cafe. Karate Cafe. Um, we've had a number of martial arts podcasters on, and I'm mm-hmm. feeling like I'm missing some, and I'm, I'm, I'm sad about that now. Mm. Um, but it's also why, and we've talked about this, why we put resources into martialartspodcast.com. And uh, shout out to LK, who's doing it. Like, we, we've got some work that we've got to do. I'm going to work with her. But the goal, for the most part, is if there is an established and active traditional martial arts podcast, let's get it up there. Let's get the, some exposure. Mm-hmm. Let's connect everybody the way Jared and I and Ando and I, and Ando and Jared, and, and we've all, um, Sifu Smith, uh, Kung Fu Podcast, the way we've all kind of connected and supported each other because this show doesn't suffer if I help Jared. Jared's show doesn't suffer if he helps me. If anything, we help each other. We grow accordingly. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know the order these are coming out, but earlier today we recorded an episode on competition, Mm -hmm. reconciling competition and Cooperation. cooperation in your martial arts training. It's the same idea here. I could have an unhealthy attitude towards other podcasts and say, I'm, I'm not going to acknowledge you. I'm not going to come on your show. Maybe I'll go on your show, but you're not coming on my show. Yeah. And, and really be negative about it. And honestly, there are people in this space who are like that. I don't associate with them. You're never going to hear me talk about them because why? Right? I'm not going to say negative things about somebody. I'd just rather not say anything. As I hear other people do better, I get better. Here's a great example. When I started this show, as soon as I got acquainted with Sensei Ando and the quality of his presentation, his audio, everything, I was like, oh, I got to step it up because I loved what he did. Still love what he does. But it gave me something to point out and say, there are some elements in here that I could do better. So I worked on getting better, better microphone. Um, how do we do more with video? He is the reason that I started doing Thursday episodes without a script. Hmm. Interesting. He and I have talked about this. So, what was the the heart of the question? Not the why is it martial thoughts. Um, what's what, your What's the best martial arts what's podcast the best? besides Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio? And why is it martial thoughts? <laughs> the best martial arts podcast is the one that you find most supportive in your martial arts journey, and that is why MartialArtsPodcast.com exists. That's why I support other martial arts podcasts because, let's be real, what is the pre- what is the whole business model of Whistle Kick? To get people into and keep them training in the martial arts. If you listening to Martial Thoughts or watching Fight for a Happy Life or any of the other podcasts out there, if that worked better for you and kept you more engaged in your training and thus you were felt more supported in your martial arts journey, I would rather you listen to that. If you only have time for one, I want you to watch or listen to the one that keeps you training, that resonates with you. Yeah, I I will never forget one of the martial arts schools that I went to. I'd moved to the new air, to new area, and sent a message to this instructor, and his emailed response to me was, "What you would expect. Feel free to come by and check out a couple of classes for free." And then he said, "If you don't like what you see here, let me know." And I'll be happy to point you in another direction that might be a school that you like. Yeah. Not, there is no one school, or in this case, there is no one podcast that everyone in the world is going to relate to. And that's okay. We try to do a variety of different things. We're doing two a week. We're doing everything we can. And we're trying to get as close to 100% as we can, but we'll never get to 100%. So instead of fighting for that last whatever, mm-hmm, mm-hmm acknowledging that there are other people who do things differently. If you want an in-depth discussion on a philosophical aspect of the martial arts or uh, a book, Jared's your guy. Jared does amazing episodes with that. Ando is able to get to the heart of people in a a different but just as deep way as I do when Mm -hmm. I do an interview. But I listen to what he does when he talks to people and I'm like, such a great question that's such a great insight right like it keeps me going yeah. and i could say that about a number of the martial arts podcasts i'm not going to 
go further than those two. The, the reason when we talk about martial arts podcasts, I bring up those two, is because those are the two who have been the most supportive in what we've done. There has never they, been they anything. Yeah, they get it. There's never been anything I've asked of either of them that they've said no. Hey, you want to come on for an episode? Yeah, let's do it. Right? Was it 600 we did, the three of us? Yeah, 600. Yeah, it was 600. We yep. did the three of us. And that, I love that. It was so much fun. Mm -hmm. So, check out Martial Thoughts. Check out martialartspodcast.com. And, uh, yeah, Jared's also a, a frequent attendee to First Cup. Yep. Does some great stuff. He's, he's getting up early, getting ready for school. All right. Okay. Good job. Yeah. That's all we got. That's all we got. That was question number four. I like it. So remember, tell this guy questions for next time. Give me more questions. If we get more dialed in on a format, this will probably be a monthly thing. You know, mm -hmm. right now we're doing like five to six weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if we get more questions coming in, because this is an easy show to put together. We don't have to think as much. And it can, it can be really fun because you can ask questions like Jared did. Clearly, you're allowed <laughs> to be ridiculous. <laughs> Who knew? I mean, we talked about how to fight a woodchuck. So, you know. If you're a first-time listener to this show right now, if this is your first episode, you can go back through and listen to other Q&As where we discussed, Jeremy discussed, how he would fight a woodchuck. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm fight I'm my brain is really trying to take a hard left here. I'm fighting, you know, if you ever held a held a horse that wants to turn off. That's what I'm doing with my brain right now. So, uh, to recap, Apple Podcast reviews, and guess what? You don't need to have an iOS device. You can create an Apple account and log in and review a show. In fact, last I knew, you couldn't even do it from a device. You had to like, they bounce you all over the place. If, if you're if you're an Apple person, you understand. You got to do it their way. Uh, other things, get the Flex program at whistlekickprograms.com. Don't forget the Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. If you want to email me, it's jeremy at whistlekick.com, andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. Two episodes. Each week, social media at Whistlekick, discount code, podcast15 for 15% off at whistlekick.com, and newsletter, sign up for the newsletter. There's so many things. All right. Until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have a great day. day.